once this is discovered, you're better off treating it sooner rather than later. Children are always going to be going to their pediatrician, and many times the pediatrician will notice something on exam and will say that, uh, you know, they think um, there may be something abnormal and they'll send them to a specialist just to be evaluated. Many times the pediatrician will make the diagnosis and they'll say, this is tongue tie, you need to go have that taken care of. You made me die, Mike. Sometimes there's articulation or speech or swallowing or eating problems and they're sent to a therapist, like a speech therapist for evaluation, and then they do the evaluation. And send them. So it sort of could come from one of a different ways. And sometimes actually the parents notice it. Say lollipop. Lollipop. They'll point it out you know, either to the pediatrician or they'll come directly to a specialist. Say lollipop again. Lollipop. Ta-da. Ah. In kids with more mild tongue tie who actually don't have major problems with articulation, they will oftentimes, in an older age, notice that they can't protrude their tongue. For example, they can't lick an ice cream cone. They then verbalize themselves, there's something wrong, I can't do this and my friends can. And then when you get, of course, into adolescence, there's the whole issue of kissing, and that sometimes that's a problem with tongue tie as well. So sometimes ones that are a little bit more mild and that are well compensated will actually be noticed by the child or the patient themselves. But I think basically, once this is discovered, you're better off treating it sooner rather than later to allow it to heal and to allow a child to then go on and develop uh, with a totally normal tongue function.